For this section, we want to look at models and applications of some of these linear equations that we've been looking at in recent sections. So for this first part, we're going to be looking at writing a linear equation to solve an application. Some things to consider with that is you want to set up a model of the equation, define a real world application, then determine first the known quantities and define your unknown quantities. So it definitely will be some of those word problems. Don't get sick at your stomach. We're going to get through this together, but it is going to be taking some words and applications in real life situations and turning them into equations. Math people are lazy. We like to turn those kind of problems into equations to better solve them and eliminate all those words along the way. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of include this chart here, and this does come from your textbook if you want to reference it there. Just some things to kind of consider. If it were to say like one number exceeds another by A, they're probably going to be considering one number such as X and the other one being added to plus an A value. Twice a number means to multiply. A number is more than another number. Again, that's addition. A number is less than twice a number. That's going to have that two times the variable subtracting a value. The product is your multiplier. Decrease, so we're looking at multiplication and subtraction. The quotient, that's your division. Plus is three times the number, so it's looking like we're going to have to add and divide. Is is your equal sign, so we're going to have a multiplier by three. And the last one, the product of, so we're multiplying, three times the number, so that'd be 3x, and the number decreased by b. So we have some groupings going on there. So I want to kind of give you some sampling with some words and examples. Now we're going to work through some problems and really relate this in there. So it does give us a process as we look through this, how to, given a real world problem, make a linear equation to fit into. One, assign some known quantities. I either use X or if they call it like company A and B, call it A and B. Don't confuse yourself. Assign a variable to represent the unknown quantity. If there is more than one unknown, find a way to write the second in terms of the first. If they say one number is bigger than another number, don't over assign variables. Try to use the ones you already have. Write an equation interpreting the words as mathematical operations and then solve. Be sure the solution can be explained in words including the units of measure. You are doing the math for someone's problem. You've got to be able to interpret x equal to 4 back to company A and B. So make sure when you get done with it, you don't box it and go, I am done, I am moving on. Make sure you read the problem and fully answer it. So let's work through some examples and see if we can kind of apply all this that we just talked about. So in this first example, it says, find a linear equation to solve for the following unknown quantities. One number exceeds another. So here's my first number. Here's my second number. By 17, exceeds by 17. Let's call the first one x. That means the next one is going to be plus 17 to get to it. And there's some, some meaning addition, is, there's your equal sign, 31. Find the two numbers. So I'm saying if I sum these up, it should give me 31. Take it slow. I don't picture you finding, okay, let's see, x plus x, that'd be 2x plus 17 equal to 31. I don't see you pulling this out in your first step. Go slow. What are you looking at? What do these words mean? How can I put them all together? Now when we're to this point, we're just going to solve it out. So it gives me 2x equal to 14. Divide. So x gives me 7. Okay, I'm done. Let me go on. No. Last important step. Can it be explained in words using the units of measure? This said, find a linear equation to solve the following unknowns. There's that linear equation. Find the two numbers. So if x is 7, that means my first number is 7. Plug 7 in here, and then 7 plus 17. And that gives me 24. Now, I have fully answered the question. I have all three parts to my answer, and I'm going to get full credit for this problem. Let's work another one. Okay, number two here at the top. Find a linear equation to solve for the following unknown quantities. One number, okay, so one number, let's call it x, is three more than twice another number. 
Okay, so here's my other number. It is three more, there's my plus sign, twice, we've already seen that on the first page, so 2x, if the sum of the two numbers is 36. So I'm going to add these up and I should get 36. There's a process. Go slow. Don't freak out because there's words in math. Figure out what you know. What can you work with? Now I'm going to combine like terms. 2x and x gives me 3x plus 3 equal to 36. And I'm going to solve accordingly. So this gives me x to be 11. So again, find a linear equation to solve the following unknown quantities. There's my linear equation. Find the numbers. So x to be 11, that's my first number. If I plug 11 back into 2x plus 3, this gives me 25. So I have found my numbers and my linear equation. Next part. Okay, this one is more steps, but still the same process. There are two cell phone companies that offer different packages. Company A, so look, I'm going to say A, charges a monthly service fee of $34, so they're only going to charge that once a month, plus 0 0.05 cents per minute talk time. So for however many minutes you talk, they're going to multiply that by a nickel and add it onto your monthly bill. Company, company B charges a monthly service fee of $40, so one time fee once a month, and four cents per minute of talk time. So although we have a larger monthly fee, we have a lower per minute fee, so it really just depends on how much we're going to talk. Write a linear equation that models the packages offered by both companies, part one. Number two, if the average number of members used each month is 1160, which company offers the better plan? That means if X is equal to 1160 minutes, which one is the better plan or the cheaper plan? So what you're going to do is you're going to take company A. You're just going to take your handy dandy equation here, plug in the amount of minutes they gave you, calculate that out, so do 34 plus 0 0.05 times 1160, and you should get $92. Do it again for company B. So we're looking at 40 plus 0 0.04 times that 1160, and you should get $86.40. So who has the better deal? Company B does. It's going to save us about $6. Now it says part three. If the average number of minutes is 420, so we got someone who doesn't talk as much. So is it going to pay off for them to have a cheaper monthly fee and a higher per minute fee? Let's see. So again, I'm going to do A. So I do 34 plus 0 0.05 times 420. Again, I'm going to punch that in my scientific calculator, and this tells me $55. Okay, let's try company B. So I would do 40 plus 0 0.04 times 420. And this gives me 56.80. So for the one with the less minutes, I'm going to save a dollar 80 if I went with company A. Now number four says, how many minutes of talk time would yield equal monthly statements from both companies? So I want equal statements. So I'm going to take company A and set equal to B and figure out what X value is the exact same amount? We can see we talk a lot, we're going to go with B. We talk a little, we're going to talk with A. But really, where is that dividing point for this problem? And so I'm just going to set A, 34.5X, equal to 40.04X. Set them equal so I can subtract 34. Getting in my boundaries here. I'm going to move over the 0.4, so I get, let's see, 6 equal to 0.01x, divide them both by 0.01, and that gives me x to be 600. So at 600 minutes, we're going to have the same monthly statement. So what this shows me is, if I talk less than 600 minutes a month, I probably want to go with company A. If I talk with more than 600 minutes, I probably want to go with company B. Everyone kind of sure you're just going to have to take a stab at it because 600 is going to be the dividing line to where these aren't both, uh, where these two are equal. 
So when you're faced with a problem, don't be scared. Start slow. Think about what you know. Think about what you can work with. Now for part two, I want to look at using formulas or known formulas to help us. So a couple of reminders. Area is normally in square units. The formula section is used to find the area of a, like maybe a rectangular region. Remember that? It's length times width. Perimeter is in linear units. Um, the one to find the two-dimensional regular, just a rectangle, is twice the length plus twice the width, but you're just adding up all the sides. And then volume, remember, is in cubic units. And for, say, a rectangular three-dimensional um, figure, we're going to do length width height. So just kind of some remembrance there of things you've done before. Let's do these two examples. Example one, the perimeter of a rectangular outdoor patio is 54. So I'm going to take the math out of that. Perimeter is equal to 54. Then it says the length is 3 feet greater than the width. So my length is 3 feet greater than the width. What are the dimensions of the patio? Well, it is rectangular, so that would be twice the length plus twice the width. I know length is equal to 3 plus w, so I'm going to plug it in here. So perimeter is equal to 2 times 3 plus w plus 2w. So my perimeter is equal to distribute 6 plus 2w plus 2w. I'm going to combine like terms. And then now... We need to figure out, okay, I need only one letter. Oh, yeah, perimeter is equal to 54. So 54 is equal to 4w plus 6, and then solve for x. So let's see, 54 minus 6 gives me 48. Divide both sides by 4. So w would be equal to 12. Now it asks me where are the dimensions. So I'm going to have to come back over here and say, okay, well, let me add 3 to that. So my length would be equal to 15 to fully solve that problem. So with some of these, you are going to have to take multiple steps. Again, go slow, take your time. Try and take out your information as you go. Number two, it says the perimeter of a tablet of graph paper is 48 inches. So perimeter is 48. The length is 6 inches more than the width. Find the area. So trying to figure out that area. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I know perimeter is equal to twice the length plus twice the width. So I'm going to plug in what I know. Two times, let's see, my length is 6 plus w plus 2w. So I'm just going to solve it out. Distribute. Combine. And solve for w. So this gives me 9. So let's see. If I go back up here, 9 plus 6 tells me the length is 15. This didn't ask me for dimensions. It asked me for area. So remember, area from above is length times width. So I take my length, my width, and then multiply those two together, and that gives me 135. So it's definitely multi-step here, but welcome to college. We're in college algebra. We don't just need little steps, fill in the blanks. We're only plugging in values. We need to be able to take situations, solve them out with the skills we know, and then be able to interpret those to fully answer the problem. Let me know if you have any questions along the way.